Young workers between the ages of 8 to 18 to 34, they may have more leverage in the workplace than they think. Here to explain the financial rationale millennials can use to justify raises or flexible working hours is Janelle Marte of Market Watch. She's also joined by J Dan Schwabel. He's founder of the Generation Y research firm Millennial Branding and author of Promote Yourself. Thanks so much to both of you for being here. Dan, let's just talk about this in, in general. Why are millennials, this age group of 18 to 34, such a fluid uh, bunch in the workplace? Well, if you compare them to older generations, they only, they only stay at a company for three years on average. We've done several studies, including this one, that's proved that because they're looking for a company that wants to make a difference in the world. They want to make a big impact when they first start out uh, at their job. And even, the, even though it takes time to become a manager, they, they're kind of, they're pretty impatient. They want to really work on projects that matter and they want, you know, workplace flexibility. They want different things that a lot of these companies don't provide. They don't have these programs that uh, attract millennials and actually retain them at the same time. And managers get really frustrated with millennials because they're so different. And so there's that disconnect between uh, how they perceive workplace success and how work should be done. So Janelle, this, this sort of job jumping, right, that millennials are willing to do, how does it actually give them negotiating power in the job that they're currently in? So companies are starting to realize that their millennial, that their millennial employees, their younger workers, are leaving after just a few years on the job. And this is after they've invested in them in their training. And so it really is a financial loss every time that somebody moves away from the company, especially if it's a you know, very top talent, uh, highly admired employee. And so companies are starting to realize this, and many of them are rolling out changes and retention programs on their own. And the catch is that if you're not getting it, you should ask, as Dan will, will tell you. And, and when you cite, you know, how much it costs a company when someone leaves, I think this one of the stats you found was 15000 to $25,000 just to sort of uh, retrain a new employee and the sort of loss of time that you have in there. And this obviously gives them negotiating power. So, Dan, I'm wondering, you know, if you were advising millennials, obviously you have a lot of experience in, with this age group, in terms of what they can ask for in their existing workplaces to make things better for themselves if they want to perhaps stay there, what would you say? They shouldn't ask for anything in the beginning. They need to master their current job and really prove themselves with hard results. And then they have negotiating power. So I have friends, one of my friends, he can now work from New York, even though the company is based in Boston, because he's done such a good job over the past three years. And then I have other friends who've demanded, you know, more flexibility and, and to be able to, you know, work from home and do other things because they've worked really hard in the beginning. So instead of rushing in and demanding so many different things, you need to really prove yourself first. And then if you have a great manager and you have a supportive company that wants to build a strong culture, then they'll, they'll, they'll support you. And there's many companies that already do. Yeah, Janelle, Janelle, on that point, though, you know, what in terms of the companies that you've talked to, have you seen them being flexible on some of the th these things like hours, where people work, offering them mentoring? Yeah, so PWC is one that they actually noticed this and surveyed their younger employees and found that 20, almost 20% of them would take a pay cut if it meant that they could work fewer hours. And a lot of them really wanted a flexible work schedule. So they created an initiative where each team would allow their employees to either come in late or start earlier or whatever it is so that they could meet their deadlines, but also, you know, get to Zumba class or whatever it is that they're trying to do. Um, so you're starting to see this and also more mentoring programs. Um, better feedback. They're trying to make these changes. And Dan, you know, what about if you want to work somewhere else besides where the office is located, right? Like say you have a, a home office in Pennsylvania, but you really want to live in New York City because you're in your 20s. You think that's sort of where you might have a better social life. Do you find companies are more flexible about that? It depends on the company. You know, certain companies, let's say, uh, you know, a hospital, you're probably going to have to go to work. Whereas technology companies, if you're in a certain you know, position, let's say you're doing social media for a tech company, there's no reason why you should, why you should go to work. I mean, I wasn't, when I was working for a Fortune 200 company, I, I, was at, I asked them, why can't I work from home? And they said, well, because you know, your, your coworkers will be jealous. And, and so millennials are starting to ask this question, why is there a nine to five work day? You know, that doesn't make sense anymore in a world that's 24 seven. Um, 365, you know, you're kind of always on, you're connected to technology when you leave for work. So I think, you know, we're the first generation that's really going to ask that big question and hopefully, hopefully a lot more companies will have the answer. 
And some of these things are important to all, all age groups, in fact. I mean, I keep asking, like, let's do lunch break from the middle of Montana. They have not granted me that wish yet. I'm, I'm still working on it. Mentoring, though, I just want to know about that. Janelle, last word to you. Uh, you sort of touched on that a minute ago, but why is mentoring so important to this particular generation? Is it just simply the age? Well, it's, it's about knowing that you're doing a good job and wanting to know how you can do better. There are a lot of employees, um, you know, in all generations, but, but particularly this generation, once the project is done, that they'll ask, okay, great, how can I do better next time? And getting that feedback also helps them to know, you know, if they're on the right track and if, how close they are to that next promotion. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much to both of you for being with us, Dan. I appreciate your joining. More on MarketWatch.com from Janelle. Bye, you guys.